Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, How to Keep Employees Informed, Upbeat, and Productive During a Crisis. If you have any questions during today's webinar, feel free to type them in the questions section, and we will do our best to answer them at the end of the presentation. Our presenter today is Darren Gibbons. Uh, Darren is the president and co-founder of Thought Farmer. Uh, Darren, over to you. Thanks, Kelly. Um, so I'm going to get uh, in today's talk here, I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, how our experience, how we prepared for this crisis, and I'm going to share some examples about how, uh, how we and some of our customers uh, use Thought Farmer um, in this crisis and in others um, to help uh, keep their employees productive uh, during difficult times. So first, I, I just want to touch a little bit about Thought Farmer for those of you that are new to Thought Farmer. Um, Thought Farmer has been around since 2006. It's intranet software that helps drive employee engagement and boost productivity. And when we talk about intranets, we talk about five main purposes of the intranet. And um, this is actually a definition that came from a, an intranet expert, uh, James Robertson. And he talks about content, he talks about communication, collaboration, culture, and activity. So content, these are gonna be your policies and procedures that you can share from your intranet. Um, communication, which is something we're going to talk a lot about here today, which is like the ability to share news and keep your employees up to date with what's going on inside your organization. Um, next is collaboration. So this is project specific work, um, people coming together to work on a project. Um, internets are great for helping to collaborate. Um, culture is another key thing here as well. Um, in a lot of organizations, that culture is, is defined inside their office. And when we move to a fully remote office, um, we're going to have challenges keeping that culture alive uh, and last of all is activity and this is actually the ability to use the internet to drive real business activity and do work inside your organization um, so as we go through here we're going to share some examples but you'll see how they touch on these five purposes of the internet um, thought farmers use all around the world um, companies uh, large and small are using thought farmer to, to help drive that collaboration we're going to share some stories from some of these customers here today so first off, we want to talk here a little bit about business continuity in the time of crisis. Um, like many organizations, we made the same uh, quick decision to transition to a fully remote workforce uh, in response to this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Um, this is actually something we were able to roll out fairly smoothly um, because we actually had in place a plan uh, in terms of what we needed to do in the case of a pandemic. Um, I put this together myself about back in 2016 and you know, at the time, it, it did feel a little bit uh, overkill that I didn't really need to produce a, a pandemic response plan. But for what it's worth, it's something that I was glad that we had in place, especially as we saw this the rising inf infection rate. So in terms of most businesses though, um, the stats are actually not that great um, in terms of how prepared they are uh, for these types of pandemic scenarios. Um, this is a study that was produced by Mercer um, back in 2020, and they said 51% of organizations had no plans on how to address this type of scenario. And 92% said that working from home um, as a primary option was not possible for them. So a key thing here, what we need to have is business continuity. And business continuity is the organization's ability to ensure that operations and core business functions are not severely in impacted by a disaster or an unplanned incident that takes uh, critical systems offline. And it's gonna help to eliminate the scrambling that businesses might do if a disaster strikes. So next I'm just gonna walk you quickly what that business continuity plan should take, should contain. Um, the slides that I'm gonna share here next actually come from a, uh, uh, the Business Development Bank um, of Canada, BDC. And I will sh we'll share these links afterwards. Um, they've got a great set of policies and sample templates you can use to build a business continuity plan. So the first step in creating that business continuity plan is to create an emergency preparedness team. Um, this is gonna be the team that's gonna put together the, uh, the business continuity plan, um, champion it inside the organization, and roll it out uh, across the company. Um, so create a team, assign somebody to lead, and their key responsibility is to create that plan. Um, they're going to establish those policies and procedures, and they're going to ensure that communication both up and down inside that organization. Um, next, you're going to want to try to identify those essential services inside your organization. Now, essential services are 
these are going to be anything that's going to impact the health and safety of individuals. Um, they could cause or lead to the failure of a business unit, or they could cause your organization to meet regulatory requirements. So what you want to do is identify the services that your company uses and prioritize them. Um, number, priority A would be the essential services. Uh, priority B would be those that could be suspended for a short period of time. And priority C are those that could be extended uh, for an ex uh, could be suspended for an extended period of time. Um, next, you want to try to identify those skill sets uh, inside your organization that are critical for meeting those uh, uh, those essential services. You want to try to say <clears throat> which team members are required to do them, and you want to also find uh, who could be a backup resource for them. So for us, um, backup resources for say our support team is going to be our development team. And in the case of emergency, um, we can put them into action to help support our customers, um, even though that's not their primary responsibility. You need to make sure that everybody understands that their role may be tasked with additional responsibilities during a crisis here as well, too. Um, the next step is to prepare a plan for each of your essential services. Um, put together a description, identify those primary and secondary individuals, the impacts, and the communications plan for it. Um, a key thing here as well is to also recognize it's not just employees, it's also external stakeholders. So customers you'd want to need, that would need to um, or expect a personal notification. I don't know about you, but I've, I've been receiving a lot of, of notifications from organizations um, about their COVID-19 response plan. Um, in a lot of cases, you know, I'm really not that interested. Um, so it, it, you can go overkill with this, um, but for every organization, there's gonna be customers that do expect um, to reach out and get that communication. And in our case, we had a few key suppliers that did reach out to me, and I really appreciated that. Next, you want to test your plan against best practices. So there's a great checklist that's produced by Capital Health. Again, I'll, I'll share that in the links uh, after the webinar um, that talks about the best practices for uh, um, business continuity plans. And it provides basically a checklist that runs across a, a number of different areas, including the impact on your business, your employees, your customers, the policies that you need, um, the resources um, to protect your employees, um, how to communicate with employees, and finally, how to coordinate with external organizations and in your community there as well too. Um, and last but not least, you need to you need to communicate this plan. Um, you need to test it, and it needs to be a living document that you can revise and update over time. Um, so next, you need to um, let, let's talk a little bit more about once you have this business continuity plan, how you can use it to help your your employees. So um, a key part of a business continuity plan is uh, you need to have that single location that can help uh, um, support that business continuity. Now, we've been using our Thought Farmer powered intranet um, for over 12 years, and it's really helped us communicate and coordinate our response to the challenge that we've had here. So I'm gonna share a little bit now about how we've been using it um, to communicate with our staff. So first up is health and safety. Obviously, this is critical here in this, in this time. Um, so all of our Cronus, Coronavirus uh, health and safety information is there on the internet, including our travel guidelines, um, information to our insurance providers, every, everything that people might need um, to address uh, their health and safety concerns. And we also opened it up to allow people to ask uh, um, questions there and to hopefully uh, answer them as quickly as possible. Um, a key part of health and safety, we oftentimes focus on you know, washing hands and uh, social distancing and these types of things, but a big part is mental health here as well too. Um, this has been a really stressful time for a lot of people. And something that's been really useful uh, is just recognizing the, the mental health needs of staff there as well, too. Um, tips on how to um, uh, help them focus better, um, as well as um, something in our office, we've been sharing a whole bunch of links to um, online uh, exercises, um, yoga classes, uh, dance classes, um, things that people can do um, from their home and keep apt active. Um, next, of course, is, uh, is this top-down uh, leadership communication. So for us, we set up a, a, a section on our internet that focused on leadership updates and corporate news. Um, we outlined uh, uh, detailed updates on the spread of the coronavirus, um, tips on how to navigate remote work, um, and something you can also use here as well is we've got an add-on for Thought Farmer, um, which is called the required reading. And what it does is it, for policies or for news or key information that you want to have shared, um, you can add this um, to your page 
And then basically what it does is once people have read it, they have to acknowledge that they've, they've read and understand that document. And then as, commu as uh, internal communicators, you can track to see who's actually read that content and, uh, um, and make sure that you're getting your policies and information out to your staff and that people understand. Um, next up is uh, is town halls. So we've been using uh, video conferencing um, quite heavily, um, Zoom, GoToMeeting, and other ones. Um, so what we've been doing now is a weekly town hall meeting. So uh, my, uh, me and my business partner uh, led the first one uh, earlier this week, and we're aiming to do these on a weekly basis. So it's important updates. Um, they're shared firsthand. Um, it gives a chance for people to ask us questions directly. Uh, it really kind of reinforces our internal culture and values. And I think it helps kind of drive engagement for staff here as well, too. Uh, it was really neat to see everybody kind of come in. You can see on the left-hand side there the, uh, um, all the different uh, <clears throat> smiling faces that were, that were popping up there. So it, it was great. Um, I would be, one of the things we did as well, too, is uh, we did have an open question period. Uh, we encouraged questions from staff, and we prepared ourselves for uh, potentially questions, uh, difficult questions there as well, too. Um, next up is policies and procedures. Um, this is something that's really, this is a standard uh, internet function, um, but it, it really works well um, to be that single source of truth um, for all policies and procedures. Um, something else you can do here as well is for more kind of uh, procedural uh, um, processes, um, we recommend using uh, electronic forms on your internet. So Thought Farmer has a feature called Formflow. Um, it allows you to take processes, like if you need to purchase a hardware or software, um, somebody's doing, you know, HR changes, um, business cards, anything that needs collected, um, you know, people need to pick stuff up from the office or what have you, um, you can create electronic forms, embed them on your internet, and really move those business processes online. Um, next up is maintaining culture. Um, it's really difficult to maintain uh, culture when everybody is working remote, um, but an internet can be a great spot to kind of bring everybody together and share a little bit about themselves. Um, this is something here, this was the uh, the work from home page. Um, it's a photo gallery that we created here on our internet and encouraged everybody to create uh, photos or upload photos of where their desks were and how they're working. And sharing photos of daily life, it really helped to kind of connect to each other and some people uh, uploaded some pretty funny stuff as well too. And this kind of fun, I think, helps um, to build that culture and build that sense of connection inside of organization. Here's some of the fun pics we had here. <clears throat> I think the top left there, you can see, Amol's having a, a conference meeting there with a, uh, I think it's a Minecraft character and a purple unicorn. Um, something else your internet can really help with is locating subject matter experts. So having a really strong employee directory with the ability to filter um, based on expertise uh, gives a, makes it really easy for people to, to find those people um, that have those specific skills that they might need inside their organization. Uh, integrating your internet with the tools that you use um, is also really important as well. Um, so just recently we launched um, a new version of Thought Farmer and it added uh, Slack integration. Um, so Slack is a great tool for uh, instant communication um, uh, with people. Um, it's a great uh, um, uh, system for, for connecting people um, and collaborating, um, but it's not that great as a system of record. So what we find is that it works really well alongside an internet so that you can uh, um, easily see uh, what people are working on and uh, and what they're doing. You can search for content uh, on your internet directly from within Slack. You can uh, uh, embed links and they automatically give previews to content. Um, and you can also set up Slack uh, ThoughtFormer to automatically publish news items to Slack as well. Um, another big part of uh, another system that a lot of people use is these cloud-based uh, document management tools such as Google Drive, uh, Office 365, and Box.net. Um, as you find, or what we found is people have shifted to work remotely, um, we're really encouraging more uh, long-form document um, style collaboration um, where people are really outlining um, what they're working on and being able to take that content, um, search for it from within your internet, um, or embed it directly inside your internet is really important. Um, so all these systems work uh, um, seamlessly and uh, integrate well within ThoughtFarmer. Um, obviously working from home has been a big adjustment for a lot of people. Um, for us, we had a number of different staff that were actually remote employees. And so what we've said, this is another section we set up here was uh, um, tips and information to how to be most productive um, when working from home. 
um, it's really helped people uh, get up to speed quickly. Um, and uh, and crowdsourcing. Um, really, you want to try to do. You want to try to reach out to people and get their feedback on things. There's a lot of great knowledge inside your organization. If you can capture that and uh, and document it there in your internet, you're going to get a lot more value out of it. Um, this is an example I think I mentioned earlier here of some online workouts. Um, this is some uh, YMCA workouts that people could do. <coughs> I had a great uh, quote here. We had uh, one of our customers reach out to us and uh, they said to us, uh, I cannot imagine how on earth we'd be able to share the amount of coronavirus information uh, we need to share with all our office locations and staff segments without the power and the ability of the Thought Farmer platform. Um, that was Matt from Hachette. And it was really great to, to hear that. Um, it really felt good to know that we were helping uh, helping our, our customers uh, meet, a, meet a difficult challenge. Um, we had one of our customers that actually reached out to us a couple of years back uh, in 2017. It was a uh, bank of Oklahoma and they were hit first um, by a tornado in their head office. And then shortly thereafter, um, their Houston office was, was swamped by uh, hurricane Harvey and uh, really had a huge impact on their organization, um, shut down their headquarters. Everybody had to work from home. Um, but luckily for them, they were using our, our Thought Farmer Cloud Edition and were very easily able to um, keep everything up and running and use that as a center sor central source for communication. So we got this communication back from them. Um, so this past weekend, a tornado struck our primary operation center in Tulsa. All systems were down. We had no way to communicate with employees as we weighed options for recovery efforts. And Thought Farmer really became that central repository for the information that we shared with our employee base. Uh, we were able to steer all employees to our internet and they were able to log on from their homes getting updates throughout. So that was great to, um, to hear that there and uh, to see know that we were able to help um, those customers. So um, that's a quick overview of Thought Farmer and uh, how it can help uh, your organization in these types of times. Um, it's something we really want to try to, we, we see it as mission critical software and we want it to be set up quickly and uh, help you to uh, keep employees informed about news, um, remote work, and setup. Um, to quickly set up collaborative groups to share uh, important content and documents. Help employees locate people's remote contact information through an employee directory. And keep employees united and upbeat during a crisis with social updates and digital event signup. So those are some of the key benefits that you're going to get there from Thought Farmer. Um, and we really want to try to make sure that we get it into the hands of as many people as possible. So something we're doing here um, for coronavirus is we're put together this uh, Thought Farmer business continuity package. Um, we're offering the first 90 days free. Um, we know it's been a tough transition for thousands of companies and we'd like to see, we'd like to do what we can to help. So we've got a limited number of these packages. Um, if it's something that you're interested in, um, please reach out to us and see if you qualify. Um, basically, it's uh, available to everyone inside your organization for free for 90 days um, with the, the option to cancel at any time. So that's the, the email to reach out, uh, engage at thoughtfarmer.com if, if this package sounds interesting to you. Um, if you'd like to get a demo of Thought Farmer um, or if you'd like to just ask us any questions, uh, yeah, feel free to do that. Um, that's the end of my official slide deck. Um, I do have some time here for uh, Q&A. Um, so if you guys have any specific questions here, um, feel free to use um, the, the chat um, or the questions interface there, and uh, Kelly will be sharing those questions. Thank you, Darren. Uh, yes, we do have a few questions. Um, Mike is asking, how often should we be communicating to our employees about the crisis? Um, yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, I think for a lot of organizations, uh, it, it's going to be different. Um, you're going to have to figure out um, what type of cadence uh, works best for you. Um, something that, that's worked really well, I mean, just locally for us here, um, our local uh, um, health uh, agency um, has been publishing uh, every day, uh, 3 p.m., their updates on the coronavirus statistics. And it's just nice having that steady drumbeat of information. And so what we recommend, uh, I think for staff, um, if you're gonna go ahead and start publishing these types of news, whether it's a news article or a town hall, um, that you pick a schedule and stick with it. Um, for us, what we're aiming to do is the, the town hall is being done on a weekly basis. Um, other information, um, the updates is kind of being done on more as, a, as needed basis, but um, that town hall for us, which then gets published back onto our internet, um, is available there um, on a weekly basis. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Lisa is asking, uh, what steps can we take to ensure that everyone's voice is heard across the company uh, and how to make that message more effective? Um, yeah, so I, I think that for um, for these types of initiatives to be successful, or a lot of this is going to come back to, to company culture. Um, what's worked well for us? I mean, we're a pretty uh, open organization, so we do encourage those types of conversations and have kind of designated areas um, where we look specifically for feedback. Um, so for some things, uh, for some news, for some information, um, we, you know, whenever at the end of it, I always ask for questions or for feedback, but I always make clear like where where we want to try to capture that, whether if it's an email um, or if it's going to be typically what we'd want to try to do is um, encourage people to use the internet to add comments and ask questions there so we can respond to them um, there on the internet. Um, generally speaking, we like to, we recommend uh, uh, keep things a little bit more open rather than less open. Um, so take a look at the security settings on your internet and make sure that uh, um, that everybody has access to comment and add that information. Okay, we also have a few questions where people are asking about um, trying to get buy-in uh, from their executive at this point in time. Um, Darren, do you have any tips on that? Um, yeah, so we actually do have um, some information on ROI and uh, preparing a business case. Um, a lot of times, uh, in, in for some organizations, this is this is an urgent offering, and it's an urgent issue. Um, we need to be able to get back, uh, and uh, <clears throat> we need to be able to respond quickly to um, uh, to this coronavirus issue. We need a place to um, to collaborate, um, so we can do that very quickly with obviously with our with our first ninety day free with that continuity package. Um, but I think it's also good to look at it from a larger perspective there as well too, and what the benefits of an intranet are and, and how they can work over time. So we encourage people to, uh, um, we can pass those links on there as well around uh, um, ROI and uh, building that business case. Thanks. Uh, Michelle's asking, uh, how much information is too information? We have several pages dedicated to COVID-19. The main page gets views, but people are not going to the links and information that are layered underneath that main landing page. How do we get people to start clicking around? Hmm. Yeah, no, that's a good question. I mean, I think uh, there is a, a lot of the best practices, I think, in terms of uh, writing for the web um, can apply here as well, too. So. Um, oftentimes it may make more sense to, uh, on that main page, have some summary information with some details on there as well. Um, another option is to use something like that required reading add-on to uh, uh, enforce uh, people to make sure that they come into those those more detailed pages, especially if it's more important there as well too. Um, ultimately there is, uh, I think we just have to make it as easy as possible and to um, we would encourage, you know, embedding links uh, um, both inside the document as well as relying on the, the built-in navigation to make it easier to find that content. Thanks. Uh, Kelsey is asking, we've launched our intranet in the midst of COVID-19. Any suggestions on how we can ensure our employees find the intranet useful, valuable at this time and not just another thing they need to do when they were already overwhelmed right now? Yes. Yeah, no, and I think we have to just, we have to be aware of that as well too, especially as uh, um, these organizations, you know, people are getting a ton of information here. They're feeling uh, overwhelmed, especially with a lot of the the news um, that's out there. Um, I think that for us, um, what we've found to be useful has been um, ensuring that everybody has clear. Some of our, our so we started off with the town hall, and the first town hall that we did was very broad. Um, you know, just kind of everybody stay home, be safe, keep yourself healthy, and these types of things. Um, now we're shifting more into kind of more uh, direct. Um, uh, base communication in terms of teams and priorities uh, to help communicate what everybody needs to be working on next. Um, and so I think for the internet, I think the opportunity there is to like recognize is like where can we, uh, how can we leverage the internet to use, to facilitate that type of communication inside the organization so that everybody knows, okay, what are the priorities that I'm working on for this week? Um, these are the types of uh, um, collaboration features that Thought Farmer is great at um, to encourage teams to kind of dig into that, um, set their priorities, set their goals, and make sure everybody's clear what they should be working on. 
And it's going to be different, I think, at that point. It's moving away from uh, company-wide initiatives down to specific uh, people initiatives or team initiatives at that point. Thanks, Darren. Uh, that looks like all the questions. If we missed any, um, we will uh, follow up um, individually with any questions or any answers that we have to those questions. Um, but otherwise, uh, thank you, everyone, for attending our webinar. And we will be following up with the recording. And uh, Darren, thanks for presenting on this topic. Great. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks. Goodbye.